So hi, Lauren. Thank you so much for agreeing to this interview. Uh, just hey, wondering, Amanda. Hey. <laughs> just wondering if you could start off by telling us a little bit about yourself. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for inviting me to, to chat. So my name is Lauren Hodson. I am one of the ministry team at St. Matthew's United Church. I am originally from Vancouver and I grew up in Vancouver, really involved in the United Church and moved after studying um, political science and art history and then some years of working in communications and some travels. I moved to Toronto in 2008 to begin my Master's of Divinity Studies at Emmanuel College and really fully planned to move back to Vancouver after ordination, uh, but in the meantime, met my now wife, Sarah, who's also a United Church minister, and we planted roots here in Toronto, and uh, here I, I still am uh, many years later, and we live in the East End, a little bit far away from St. Matt's, but love our little neighborhood. We have a two-year-old daughter, named Ruby. And uh, in addition to being the minister at St. Matthew's, I'm, I'm part-time. I also work part-time for the United Church's recently formed property corporation, the United Property Resource Corporation. I just started that role in September, so it's pretty recent. Um, really enjoying it. I've always really enjoyed kind of having one foot in a local community and, and for the duration of my ordained ministry that's been St. Matt's where I've, I'm in my 10th year now in ministry with St. Matt's and then um, having my another foot somewhere else so uh, have done communications and webinar work for the United Church I previously worked for the Edge Network and and now with the UPRC it works really well for me to have kind of that local uh, especially the worship leadership piece that I just love that part and then also something kind of the broader the broader piece as well um, so that's, that's a little bit about me. That's awesome. So it sounds like you've worn a lot of different hats kind of throughout your, throughout your time. Definitely, definitely. It's, uh, yeah, I've been in a variety of roles in, in the church, uh, over, over the years. Um, but it's interesting, you know, uh, that the, the piece of worship leadership, preaching, the, the element of, of the word of the call to ordain ministry has always been such a, a source of, of grounding and call for me um, and, and kind of that place where, where I always find myself coming back home and um, feeling a real sense of, of fulfillment and of that call with St. Matt's. Um, I, over the, the past 10 years that I've been with St. Matt's through my having these other roles as well, I've been in different configurations of part-time. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's kind of always taken different shapes. Um, but right now my focus is really of my part-time is really on, on worship leadership and then supporting the congregation through um, some of our, our visioning work and, and committees, um, especially looking towards the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so what what led you to become a minister like you talked about that call like can you describe mm. that a little bit yeah so as i said i grew up really involved in the united church um in vancouver i was part of a uh, youth ministry program really super actively involved um and many of my closest friends still are friends that i met through kind of a, a cross vancouver uh lower mainland youth group and still really connected to those folks. Um, I, my, my family was involved in the United Church uh, around my early teen years. It kind of became a thing though that, that was my thing. You know, we still went to church as a family, but it was really my decision to become more involved and, um, and, and that sense of connection to the church. And getting involved in things like youth council, um, started leading a group of us started leading what we called wandering worship services so we'd go to different churches all around the greater vancouver area and lead worship um and from that age as a teenager from that point was pretty sure that ministry was was in my future 
Um, but at that point in my life, I wasn't quite ready to admit it or embrace it or embody it, I guess. So um, definitely had a period of time where I, I, you know, looking back now, I knew that I was called to become an ordained minister, but very much kind of pushed that aside. Um, so I, I studied politics and then was going into uh, a, a program in journalism, actually. Um, and around that point in time, um, was, was journeying with one of my best friends through a cancer diagnosis and cancer treatment. Um, and so I deferred the journalism route and, um, due to that and a number of, number of reasons. And in that time, I, um, began the process of discernment, which is a process that the United Church offers for people who might feel an interest or a call to ministry. Um, just, I think, especially uh, journeying with Ashley in that, that time of her life, um, felt this sense of, uh, of call in a new way. Um, you know, that sense of accompanying people in not only the the most joyful moments of our lives, but also some of the hardest moments of our lives. Um, and so um, began the discernment process, but still kind of was, you know, at a distance. Um, and after the first gathering with my discernment committee, I think I, I said to my parents probably, or a friend, you know, okay, yeah. This is, I, I definitely am called to ministry. This is happening. Um, it just became, it felt so clear. It was for me, my sense of call was both uh, an internal call and then a lot of calls from other people kind of tapping me on my shoulder and um, calling that out in me, calling out the things in myself that I couldn't even acknowledge or see in myself at the time. Um, and and from that point, uh, yeah, just just really, really felt that sense of conviction um, and call towards ordained ministry in the United Church of Canada. Um, and then I, I've, I've often said that once I was nearing graduation and ordination that the emergence of St. Matthew's into to my life, um, going through the interview process with St. Matt's, that felt like another layer to, to call for me that I, I feel not only called to ministry in the United Church of Canada, but I especially feel called to ministry with St. Matthew. Um, and, and so, so here we are. Yeah. yeah. And I was one of the few folks uh, when I was going to Emmanuel College, I think I was the only person in my year who was a, a first career um, ministry student. Everyone else in my year was, was second or third career. Um, so definitely one of the the younger ministers in the United Church of Canada. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I started, at least, if, if not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it about St. Matt's that, that kind of drew you in? Like, Yeah, I think a lot of, a lot of things. Um, I, so St. Matt's isn't, we're not a huge uh, community of faith. Um, I often say that we're, we're small and mighty. Um, there's there's a real sense of community, of um, of involvement, of journeying together in faith. Um, there's it's a real a real faith community, um, and that for me was evident right away uh, when I began at St. Matt's in 2012. I guess it had been about six or eight months since Catherine, who had been in ministry prior to me, since she had left. Um, and in that time, St. Matt's members of the Carnation, you know, led worship and, and led the ministry of the church without a minister in this really beautiful, um, lovely way. And that was really apparent to me as soon as I started was like, oh, the, the presence of lay leadership, um, of caring for the spiritual well-being of the community is a really important element of St. Matt's. So yeah, so that's um, a really important element of the community. It's a, it, we're a very diverse community in terms of uh, diversity in a lot of different ways, um, racial diversity of age. Um, we don't have a, a huge group of 
kids and youth, but uh, really a number of, of active um, young ones that uh, are a really important part of, of our life as a community of faith. Um, and, and then over the years, especially kind of the sense of um, being connected in the neighborhood, um, like Bloor Street, St. Matt's is on a, a redevelopment journey, <laughs> as I like to call it. It's been going on the whole time that I've been in ministry of St. Matt's, as I'm sure Bloor Street folks can relate uh, to the length of these things. Um, but, um, you know, as we've gone about that process, um, I think for some churches, when they're going through redevelopment or any other big project like that, there can be this sense of, of pulling or looking inward. Um, for St. Matt's, it's really been the opposite of each step of that process has, has called us and led us to um, move out into the community, to be um, in, involved in the neighborhood. Um, and that's happened in a lot of different ways more recently through um, you know, our, our anti-racism group, um, through the Indigenous People Solidarity Group. Uh, we have a lot of um, teams or groups at St. Matt's. Uh, we aren't a heavy committee structure church. Um, so there's uh, a, a fluidness, I'd say, to our governance and our leadership. Um, and a sense that, you know, we have a lot of folks um, who are, are newer uh, members of the church and take on really significant leadership roles. And that's very much embraced and welcomed and celebrated. Um, you know, an example being uh, through the Indigenous People Solidarity Group a few summers ago, one of our really wonderful active members um, had the idea and, and working alongside uh, an Indigenous elder who's become the St. Matt's elder in residence uh, for a, a healing garden, mm -hmm. an Indigenous healing garden on the, the west side of the property. Um, and that's a, a ministry that's taken on a life of its own and provided this connection to the community you know now we have members of the indigenous people solidarity group who are, are not state not worship folks um and and that's fantastic you know this this sense of the ripple effect of of the church and um diverse groups of people coming together um from from diverse viewpoints or or backgrounds for for a, a common purpose um it's definitely an, another one of the things that i I really love about St. Matt's. And then also just a, an openness to experiment. I, I love to experiment in worship, um, especially in Triton things. And that is always embraced and welcomed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it sort of sounds like I'm, I'm hearing some themes of like bridge building, community building, mm. pushing boundaries and trying new things. Yeah. For sure, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, so with this collaboration with um, like Bloor Street and St. Matt's, like this coming together of um, two distinct congregations, uh, what are you what are you looking forward to about that? Um, like, what are you hoping uh, for from that? Yeah, I'm so excited about this partnership. Uh, pretty immediately, a word that's come up a, a number of times from a number of people is vibrancy. I think there's a a, a vibrancy that will emerge is already emerging through this partnership um, that will contribute to the life of both communities and our collective life together as it unfolds. I love the kind of uncertainty of it that um, we, we don't really know where it's going to lead us, but I, I'm a firm believer of um, laying good foundations and, and if we start well and we, we kind of hold true to um, the sense of covenant or the sense of commitment to relationship that um, that the spirit will be there and surprising beautiful things will emerge and I, I just feel that sense with this partnership um, you know and I think the fact that of how it came about came about quite suddenly quite out of nowhere uh, in some regards I mean um, I think Russ referred to it in his sermon yesterday as out of the blind spot Mm -hmm. um and so you know it's this thing that's emerged um and I think there's just so much potential for both communities to contribute to the vibrancy that's already present in those communities and and I think together we'll be able to do some really wonderful things 
Um, I've known Russ for many years. Uh, he um, has known my wife, Sarah, since uh, Sarah was a student at Atlantic School of Theology. Sarah did her field placement at St. Andrews when Russ was one of the ministers there. Um, and so I've, I've known Russ through Sarah for many years. And so just the chance as well to work with a friend and a, a close colleague. Um, ministry can at times be a bit of an isolating thing, especially in the midst of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so um, that, that element of collaboration, of, of working together, Russ has used the word friendship a lot when we talk about this partnership. Um, and I also love that, you know, in the, the small group that's come together with a few folks from St. Matt's and a few folks from Poor, we've, we've talked about covenantal relationship quite a bit that, um, you know, of course there will be the contracts and the things that we need uh, to make sure we're, we're starting well and we have a good foundation for this relationship, but that, that really the commitment is that these, these two communities coming together um, with God in covenant and um, th that to me feels so wonderful and feels um, like such a spirit led thing. Um, and so I'm just, um, can't wait. And I think both communities will really, I hope, uh, and I believe will really benefit from the expansive nature of, of worship leadership that, that, you know, being able to worship together, um, there's, there's gonna be a new diversity of voices and, opinions and perspectives and styles and and I'm sure there will be you know some some friction and some figuring things out and that excites me too you know is is that sense of like just just working together um and and committing to to partnership and working together and um I think there's going to be some really great things that that come out of this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah I I agree with that yeah um I'm excited for this. I think I think it'll be really good. And I was noticing yesterday on Zoom there were 128 screens, which it's incredible. Like, incredible, right? Yeah. Yeah. Super exciting. Totally, totally. Yeah, I didn't get to join in on the, the online coffee time after, but it sounded like there was some good mixing up of St. Matt's folks and, and Blur folks. And uh I think also that that element of like story sharing, you know, it's it's opportunities for both communities and then for individuals from both communities to share story and build relationship um just you know in a, especially again in in a time of covid um important really really important <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah for sure yeah um so if people want to get in touch with you what's the best way to do that yeah uh so email um and uh i have an email address listed on the St. Matt's website. Um, I, there's, there's two email addresses that I regularly use. So uh, either revlauren at outlook.com, which is the one on the St. Matt's website, um, or, or my Gmail, lauren.a.hodgson, H-O-D-G-S-O-N at gmail.com. Um, both are, you know, head straight towards me. Um, email is a, always a really good way uh, to connect. Um, the phone at the church, I don't check as regularly. so. Uh, definitely would prefer email. Um, and it was great yesterday in worship, you know, on Epiphany, I offered the invitation if people wanted me to send them an Epiphany star word um, to send me an email. And afterwards I thought, oh no, I didn't give my email for the Bloor Street folks, I just assumed. Um, and then I checked my Outlook, you know, people would have, Bloor folks would have had to go to the website, find it. And by the end of the service, there were already a ton of emails from, from Bloor Street folks. So I was really thrilled that people uh, found a way to reach out to me. So definitely welcome, welcome contact by email and looking forward to getting to know a number of, of members of the Bloor community. Awesome, that's great. That's good to know, it's good to know. Is there anything else that you wanna add? Yeah, I, I mean, I think I've, I've, I hope I've adequately communicated how excited I am um, and how excited I, I know that St. Matthews is. I've heard from so many people, um, you know, in so many ways, uh, it feels like this is something that we didn't even know we were working towards for so long. Um, and it's one of those things that you don't know it's what you've been working towards until it comes along. Um, after one of our meetings, uh, I guess in 
mid-December. Uh, a few folks from both communities met in, in person um, and in me having conversations with a few of the same math folks after uh, this, this same kind of chorus kept repeating around like, this feels like something that has been emerging uh, and we didn't even know it. And, and so here we are and we're, we're ready for it. Um, and we're excited and it feels like God's so present in this. So um, yeah, I, 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 not sure how many different ways I can say how excited we are. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's that's the the note that I would that I would end on is is just um state math uh, is is thrilled and really open and ready for this partnership and so glad that it came about. Um, and and um, it's lovely to be able to offer that hospitality and welcome into into this space. Um, for now online and hopefully hopefully in person um, as well. Yeah, well, thanks Amanda for taking the time to chat and I look forward to, to getting to know lots more, more people from Floor. Yes, awesome. Thanks Lauren, good to talk to Thank you. Thank you, you too.